Thank you very much. The high ground for the 21st century and beyond is outer space. And the Congress recognizes that the people in, uh, the men and women at NASA are a great strategic asset. The investment that this nation has made in space exploration, the leadership that we now enjoy as a result of 50 years of hard work of the men and women at the Johnson Space Center and throughout NASA, the people of America, as Pete Olson has said so eloquently, have been inspired by the work that you've done uh, from day one, and we are here today to reassure the people of the Johnson Space Center, the people of Houston, the people of Texas, and the country that the Congress stands united in support of NASA, in support of preserving America's leadership role in space exploration, that we will work uh, arm in arm without regard to party or state or geographic region to ensure that America continues to lead the way in outer space exploration. And it's appropriate, I think, that we're here gathered in this, uh, in, in this hangar because it's, uh, uh, if we do nothing, then this magnificent Saturn V will be the last heavy lift manned space rocket that America ever builds. And it's not going to happen on our watch. We will do whatever it takes, use every legislative, political, and legal tool at our disposal to ensure that the men and women in NASA can rest assured that the Congress and the people of the United States stand behind them, that we're proud of your work, that we will be there for you to ensure that Congress, uh, that, that, that NASA uh, continues to have the resources it's need, it needs, its support and the stability it needs uh, to, to do your job, which you've done so very well. We also understand in Congress, and there truly is virtually no support for the President's budget in Congress. Only a handful of members have actually said they support the President's proposal because they recognize the President has not just canceled the mission to the moon. The President has canceled America's manned space program, which is unacceptable and will not happen. We and uh, the Congress, uh, I think the country certainly understands that the, the space program is as vital to our nation's security as are our armed forces, because of course space is the high ground of the 21st century. And we would no more as a nation wholly privatize the United States Navy or wholly privatize the Army or the Air Force because they're a vital part of our strategic defense and our, uh, our strategic, their strategic assets, our armed forces, the work that you do here at the Johnson Space Center, are vital. it's vital to national security. We all support the idea of commercial uh, vehicles providing support to our manned space program, to the space station, in the same way that the U.S. Navy relies on private contractors to bring fuel to their ships or, or food, uh, food and provisions to our Navy ships. If we do nothing, we will, in the space program, can you imagine in the United States Navy having to call up General Dynamics and asking if we can, uh, by the way, can we please rent the nuclear attack submarine USS Texas to patrol the Persian Gulf? Uh, excuse me, can uh, Northrop Grumman, can we please rent the aircraft carrier uh, George Herbert Walker Bush to go patrol in the Pacific Ocean? Uh, we would not do that as a nation to our Navy. We cannot do it as a nation to our manned space program, and we will do whatever it takes, working together arm in arm in a positive, constructive way to make sure that we build the next generation of heavy lift manned space vehicles and people don't have to go to a museum to see what America used to do in space. We'll be sure that our kids are there to see what America will continue to do in space as the world's leader in exploring the final frontier. Thank you.